All right, today we're in the garage and we're messing around, trying to learn a little bit about uh, chart plotters and uh, charts, data purchased from Garmin, new chart plotter, old chart plotter, old blue chart G2 Vision, and the brand new Navionics Vision Plus. Uh, so this just came out, the Navionics Vision Plus, and it looks like this is Garmin's melting of several things they acquired over several years, now putting it into the chart plotter, because they acquired Navionics. Navionics is great, uh, and most people ran Navionics on usually a tablet or something like that, but they could uh, run it on Lowrance and Simrad, I think. Uh, strangely enough, you could not run it on Garmin, uh, and I don't know if that was, you know, some legal thing or who knows what reason it was, or maybe they were just not going to waste any time uh, making those things work, and they were just going to go right for this, which took several years. Um, they also have Active Captain, which uh, I like. Active, Active Captain, um, I like it as a resource. I wish it was used a little bit more. Maybe it will be. Uh, in the future because I like ratings and things like that um, on anchorages or, or restaurants or whatever um, so anyways this is a new Garmin 923 XSV this is an old eight-year-old uh, GPS map 741 XS the G2 Vision HD blue charts is loaded in that one and the uh, Navionics Vision Plus is loaded in the, the new unit and I had a plan on how I wanted to run things. The boat came with two of these old 741s, which worked fine. Um, but I wanted something a little bit bigger. My eye bulbs just can't see very well. And the bigger the screen, the better. Um, and I wanted something a little bit faster than these older processors. Um, so I, I purchased this one. And then out came the Navionics Vision Plus which really threw a wrench into everything uh, because this is clearly a way better product than this uh, now this is a G2 vision chart they have G3 vision stuff now which is uh, better than than this but still not as good as that as the Navionics version I'm familiar with Navionics and I just like the way it it's ease of use and you know the charting a course, planning a course, and then uh, using it to uh, to navigate once you start. Um, it's just easy to use. And I remember trying to, uh, I had an older Garmin, older than this, and I remember trying to uh, chart a course with that. It, it's a nightmare. And uh, setting each waypoint on the older stuff. On the newer stuff, it's a little bit easier, but not as easy as Navionics. So, now we have Navionics Vision Plus loaded on this 923. Let's compare it to older charts on a 741. See what the difference is. Um, this is the entrance into Tarpon Springs between Anclote, uh, Anclote Key and Tarpon Springs. Um, same spot on the map. You can see the slight differences. Now, you know, this has some shading and some depths and some various things um, this has a little bit more a little bit uh, better and resembles Navionics a little bit more um, let's zoom in here a little bit to the mouth of the inlet just to see what's going on nothing too special there but it works works just fine Zoom in here a little bit. And nothing real special. Um, but it works fine. But you see all these other points. Just like Active Captain, you have the anchorages. You have other points of interest that you can click on and it will uh, do various things. So let's look at um, let's look at an anchorage here. That is South Anclote. And Clody, um, 
click on that and it'll give you some information just like active captain and uh, one of 11 pages some title information approach some ratings that was wow that's uh, 29 January 2022 so people are using this April 2021 this guy says it's an excellent anchorage really this one I know this area well it depends on the weather you're exposed there's a lot of uh, waves that wrap around there but it's not a great place let's see here let's go back um, let's go inland a little bit this is what I like this is this new Navionics Vision Plus will be great for someone that cruises uh, or loopers something like that uh, or recreational fishermen let's zoom in a little more let's see what we got So we just toggled on to, let's see what satellite photos looks like. I don't know if I want to use it. Uh, makes it quite a bit busier. We'll shut that off for now. All right, so um, I find these photos, photo points of interest useful. For instance, this is where I keep my boat at Anclote Isles Marina. And uh, let's see, the photo, oh, that's not it. That's uh, the other side. I don't. Oh, here's a photo under here. I think. Yeah, uh, my boat's like right there somewhere. Um, so that is a good picture of Van Clute Isles Marina. Sometimes they're useful. Sometimes they're not. Let's see what else we got. That's Bell Harbor Marina. Uh, it's got an address. Got a phone number. VHF channel 16. An email. Boat US discounts, repairs 15% off. Some ratings. It's old. Old ratings. Um, let's see here. What's this? Tarpon Landing Marina. And of course, if you, you click on that and you view it, you can navigate to it if you want to. Right from there, and it'll do the auto routing let's see so the shading and the depths and all that stuff are okay there's, there's nothing spectacular um, I think you can add more let's see here you can add more detail I think it takes more memory So we'll go back out here, uh, same area for comparison on this one. And this obviously has not much in it, has what you need, works good. This does have photos, uh, let me see if I can get on one photo. So a little grainier, a little weird, hard to make any use of that photo. So this, let's see, where are we? Let's go to Gulf Harbors. If you notice on this one, as I scroll up, there's that pink area. That is the crowdsourced quick draw maps. So I believe that's data taken by uh, Garmin users that give allowance for them uh, for Garmin you know once they hook up to active captain <clears throat> and they download information to their charts or their chart plotters I think it's uploading information uh, to Garmin 
for these areas that tons of boaters go and you can see areas where they don't go uh, these, this is all way too shallow nobody would ever go there um, so Gulf Harbors is a um, water community with lots of channels houses on the water on seawalls um, so in here you can and you can overlay that information uh, just by going to options and and I just wanted to show this and you can download that information anywhere and overlay it onto your uh, navigation charts it should be taken with a grain of sand grain of salt sand or so I'm told uh, you know how accurate is it I'll bet it's pretty accurate um, accurate enough to be very useful not accurate enough you know to be perfect by any means but let's take let's scroll in here now let's go to the mouth of the channel here so over here we'll scroll in and so this is the mouth of the channel that comes in and that's some pretty useful information I think as a matter of fact there's a hole there that I had no idea that was there let me see it says it's 41 feet deep I'm, I'm gonna go check that out next time I'm out there I don't remember seeing that maybe it's there maybe it's not um, seems odd because it's mostly just sand there but who knows maybe it's a dredging site maybe it's a dredging site that's no longer there I have no idea but I'm gonna go check it out so uh, let's see so this is going back you know so this is an area where lots of boats would go because every one of these uh, fingers here has you know many many houses on it so this is actually very useful information that you probably wouldn't get otherwise from you know whoever does the soundings and the the mapping of the bottom I mean they're not going to go back into these houses but these owners do and uh, some of these are surprisingly deep I had no idea that's the main channel and as a matter of fact this is where I used to go I used to own a boat slip on the water and there was always areas like very small areas that were difficult to get through so that's the quick draw maps drawn by other people you can draw your own and you can you can draw your own you can shut these crowdsource ones off and you can use your own so if you have an area where you frequently go and it's very precarious you could map it out as you go through there and save it and overlay it onto your navigation chart which seems to be fairly useful matter of fact Garmin has this little castable thing I bought one I haven't used it yet but it also does quick draw maps and it's intended for fishing uh, areas but I figured if you lived in a really precarious area trying to get in and out of somewhere you could cast that thing all over there map it download it to your chart and overlay it on your navigation chart which would be kinda cool anyways it was just the purple area which you can see as you zoom out is contained in that box so all this area should have oh, you can see it's very sparse up here there's very little user information from the quick draw maps but as you start to get toward populated areas you get tons of information so some areas that's going to be useful some areas is not um, let's see here so also on this um, You can get your raster charts, fishing charts. Fishing charts have more contour lines. Oh, come on. I'll just go up here like this. Have more contour lines. But it's under fishing charts. So I'm assuming they do not want you to use it for navigation. But I'm sure they're pretty useful. They seem to, let's see, match pretty well to the user drawn ones as I was looking earlier um, so that's pretty nice still has let me see Come on. fingers are dry yeah so even on the fishing charts you still have your different stuff that you can access um, let's do this and they have the relief shading 
you fishermen probably love this stuff. It doesn't do me much good. But uh, let's go down to the Skyway. Right here is a deep channel out right off uh, Egmont Key that has some very deep spots here. I guess it doesn't give the depth. I, you might be able to toggle on it or something. I don't know, but so for fishermen, this would be obviously very useful. Let's see here. Submarine cable area. Come on. Egmont Key. That deep area is just over here. Great little island to explore. So, I really like it. To me, so what it does is, I don't know if I said this already, but many of us used to use a chart plotter, you know, GPS unit, something like this, and then we would have uh, Navionics running on our tablet, so you'd always have two things going at once, and I tended to use Navionics for, you know, going places. Uh, point A to point B and then I would always have this running in the background to kind of see where I was using this and whatever other information uh, and use it as a backup but I solely relied mainly on the tablet which a lot of times up top wasn't bright enough these are when you turn these up and they uh, get into in the full sun they get pretty bright compared to most tablets that seems to be the main complaint of tablets is they're not bright enough in the direct sun so, but now this encompasses Navionics, Active Captain, plus whatever Garmin details they felt like they should include into the chart plotter. So you can, uh, and of course it syncs with your phone. I'm, I'm using my phone to take this video, so I can't do it right now, but it syncs pretty well with your phone. You do all your downloads um, right through your phone. And as a matter of fact, you can sync your phone to the chart plotter in such a way that your phone is a duplicate of what's on the chart plotter. So really if you wanted to use one chart plotter uh, say on the lower helm and you were uh, up top on the upper deck at the upper helm you could just look at your phone and you can whatever you touch on here and move and and scroll happens on your phone and whatever you do on your phone happens on here simultaneously and you can select any one of these things um, uh, and so you could really use your phone to zoom in and check things and look at stuff as you're walking around the boat um, especially if you're like on autopilot or something and you just want to check on a few things and don't want to go down to the lower helm station or whatever um, I think I'm gonna sell these units and go ahead and get a second one of these for one for upper helm one for lower helm I think it's just gonna be easier that way I had planned on I have two of these 741s. I had planned on linking all of these up. I bought a GMS-10 uh, port expander too, you know, because I'm going to have autopilot, radar, a couple of other things, and I had planned on three, um, you know, plotters and link them all up together and display various things, including maybe some some video. I want the engine room. I want to be able to see the engine and bilge area without opening the uh, hatch while underway. But uh, that plan was put into action and I bought things to carry forward that plan but then this came out and that threw a whole wrench in everything because it works on this but that does not work on some of the other manufacturers like apparently Garmin and Furuno are not playing well um, you used to be able to get um, Navionics on Furuno somehow but apparently that's not going to be possible pretty soon. Um, so now you can only use the Garmin on some other units if you have the subscription. Uh, or on uh, Garmin units, but only some of the newest ones. Uh, which this is a brand new unit, but it will not work with this one. And even if I use the GMS-10 or the Ethernet cable... To hook these two together they recognize each other but I cannot put these charts on that so I was hoping to put this like on the upper helm this on the lower helm 
and then be able to you know view this uh in the way that i view this you, you know like if this was like the master processor and it just sent everything to this but for whatever reason i think it actually still you know when you do it that way this still uses the data uh of this um navionics vision plus card to display on here so it won't it won't do it you know there's just way too much data in here contained in here probably choke this thing to death which isn't good so instead of messing around with that and this is still a perfectly functional unit i was messing with this and was still happy the way that it operates and you know it's perfectly functional for basic navigation but for coastal cruising and stuff like that i think this is the way to go i really think this is going to be very useful um has a lot of data it's going to be easier to plan it's going to be easier to it's going to be easier if you're making a 60 mile leg and at mile 30 you have an issue you know one engine out whatever uh and you need to reroute to a different position um, and you didn't pre-plan that information you know um, alternate places to stop along the way you could very very easily research that in here and find alternate places to go I mean all these marker one marina this is a great marina um, you know you could go there and it's got all the details in here you know phone numbers everything you can you could do all that very very quickly within here um, if you had to do that on this there's some information in there not very much but not nearly as much as this Marker 8 Tiki Bar and Grill. That sounds nice. If they got menus on there, no, they wouldn't go that far. Alright. Bon Appetit. I've eaten there. That place is good. Right on the water. That's uh, Dunedin Marina's right there. <clears throat> In downtown Dunedin. Great place to visit. So this is pretty easy and fast compared to this uh, processor. This is fast. So I think, you know, this would be the way to go for coastal cruising um, and updates. You can update everything through your phone. Uh, this now, you know, this, this old one, I think you could update it once or twice within a year. <clears throat> they, I just checked on updates. There's no updates for this. You know, they don't even support this anymore, but... Navionics looks like <clears throat> what they're going to and probably what they're going to stick with for a while, hopefully. If you buy the Navionics Vision Plus card, it comes with one year of daily updates. Daily updates. So, if you... I think you could probably set it up so when you take your phone inside, maybe sync... Uh, maybe you have to get on Active Captain. So, if you get on Active Captain, I think you can just do updates whenever you feel like it maybe you can set it for auto updates i don't know and then every time you come close to your uh garmin you can link up with that and then it'll update everything um some of it automatically i think some of it like the uh contours relief shading uh i think you have to do that manually like pick a region and uh and do that but a lot of it i think is automatic or pretty close to it so still learning this stuff this is probably where I'm weakest um, is uh, these chart plotter operations and all the screens and what's useful and what can be uh, can be uh, updated and how many screens and different things like that I know a lot of us are we just use it as a basic function sometimes but there's probably a lot more capabilities uh, depending on what you do so anyways that's just a kind of a quick review of this brand new Navionics Vision Plus
that now goes into Garmin chart plotters. It's funny, Garmin has owned Navionics for quite a few years now, but you could not use Navionics in Garmin chart plotters until today. Now it's Navionics, Active Captain, and Garmin data all rolled into one, which in my opinion makes it pretty easy and useful. All right, I uh, gotta go to the boat and do some work. Bye.